time. We're now seeing replays of the uh, Soyuz landing. Again, uh, these views captured uh, by television cameras aboard uh, the closest uh, search and recovery helicopters in the vicinity of the landing site. You can see uh, how how close the Soyuz landed uh, to a bullseye target, basically. Uh, the uh, first uh, all-terrain vehicles already at the spacecraft within seconds after touchdown. Again, uh, the undocking occurring at 7.38 p.m. Central Time, uh, two and a half hours later at uh, 10.05 p.m. Central Time. The Soyuz uh, engines were commanded uh, to ignite for four minutes and 14 seconds in the deorbit burn that enabled the Soyuz to, to begin the trip out of orbit and to its landing site on the southern steppe of Kazakhstan. You're watching uh, replays uh, from one of the uh, search and recovery helicopters. Uh, there's a, a view of the Soyuz as it landed on its side. Uh, within uh, just a couple of minutes, uh, the first helicopters were down on the ground uh, nearby the Soyuz to begin the uh, extraction of the crew. Samakutiaev in the center seat of the descent module uh, was the first uh, to be extracted, followed by Garin and then Barasenka. The uh, three crew members uh, are inside uh, an inflatable medical tent uh, just a few yards away from uh, their touchdown point, uh, being helped out of their launch and entry suits, being helped into more comfortable clothing. Uh, they will be uh, brought into all-terrain vehicles and uh, driven a short distance uh, to individual helicopters uh, to begin a two-hour flight back uh, to the staging city of Karaganda, some 460 kilometers to the northeast of the uh, landing site itself. It's a two-hour helo ride. At that point, uh, there'll be a traditional welcoming ceremony for the three crew members, after which uh, they will split up uh, with Barasenka and Samakutiaya boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft uh, for a flight back uh, to Chkalovsky Airfield outside of Star City on the outskirts of Moscow to be reunited with their families and to be greeted by top Russian space officials, Ron Garin will board a NASA jet in Karaganda for the flight back to Houston. One of the uh, spacecraft technicians from RSC Energia wiping down uh, the hatch at the very top of the Soyuz spacecraft uh, prior to the time that it was uh, opened 
to begin the extraction process, uh, the Soyuz having landed on its side. Again, you're watching a replay uh, of the initial opening of the hatch uh, that took place uh, a short time ago as uh, the search and recovery teams uh, and RSC Energia technicians uh, began the process of uh, extracting uh, the crew from the uh, descent module of the Soyuz TMA-21 spacecraft. You can see uh, peering inside uh, the hatchway uh, how cramped uh, the quarters are. However, uh, the Soyuz landed uh, uneventfully with all three crew members uh, in the medical tent uh, receiving initial medical exams and uh, slipping into comfortable clothing for their helicopter flights back to Karaganda. It's interesting, you can see uh, how the Soyuz is rolled uh, to the proper orientation to facilitate the extraction of the crew. An excellent view in this replay of uh, the soft landing engines uh, firing just uh, a split second before touchdown to help buffer uh, the uh, initial impact of the landing under the uh, main chute of the Soyuz. And uh, one of the Russian Mi-8 helicopters landing uh, within seconds thereafter to begin uh, the process of the recovery of the crew. <laughs> 